Hello viewers, welcome back. In lesson 1, we wrote a simple direct online program in OpenPLC and in lesson 2, we developed our conveyor system in factory I.O. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to connect our OpenPLC program to the factory I.O. software. Let's get started. Before we do, kindly subscribe if you've not done that already and also press on the notification bell. This way you will always be notified whenever I upload new video. Okay, so to connect our open PLC logic to factory IO, the first thing we need to do is to go to the open PLC editor and then we open the simple project that we created that is the direct online program. In my case, I labeled it as a factory IO underscore test. Okay, so I have the program here, a simple direct online with a start stop and then the motor being the hold on and then our load being the motor itself. Okay, great. So the first thing is to generate a program for the open PLC runtime. So basically in our previous tutorial, we talked about the Windows runtime and basically with the connection between factory IO and then open PLC, we'll be making use of the window runtime. So I click on the generate to generate the program for the Windows runtime. Okay, so we can see that the generation of the so software is successful and then it's asking us to save and then you need to save it at a location where we can identify. So because I've saved it already, I select the same pin and then save it so that it will override what I already have. Okay, in my case, it's asking whether I want to replace, I say yes. Okay, so after saving, the next thing is to open the open plc runtime okay so i have the open plc runtime running and then we can see the ports within which the open plc runtime is opened localhost and then we can see port 8080 so you go to the browser you type in localhost port 8080 and then you have this interface and then the username is open plc password is open plc okay so after opening the windows runtime you have the interface where it will show the dashboard the next thing to do is to go to program and then within program you need to select the program just that you just generated from the open plc editor so i go here and select file and then you need to navigate into the folder where you save the open plc editor program so i select it and then i click on open and then i click on load program okay great so it will give you this interface and then you need to give your program a name so i will say io if you have any description you can give and then i move to the file everything still remains the same when you are done with the naming you can click on upload program it will take some time to compile we can see all the input and output we use in the program okay good so we can see that the compilation is successful and then we can click on go to dashboard okay so now with our program that is our logic loaded in the runtime we need to then move to factory IO to do configuration. Okay, so we move now to factory IO and then continue with the settings at factory IO. So with the factory IO software open, we go to open and then we select the, the conveyor project. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to set up the driver that we are going to use between factory IO and then open PLC. To do that, you come to file and then we click on drivers so we go to the drivers we drop it and then remember we'll be using mod bars between the open plc and then factory io so we go to mod bars factory io will be a server and then the open plc is going to be a client that is connected to the factory io server so i click on mod bus tcp ip server okay so by default this is the driver that we have for the tcp ip server for factory io the next thing is for us to configure it to suit the program that we wrote within uh, open plc so to do that we'll go to configuration and then under configuration because we will want the server to be always on and then the client also automatically connecting to the server we need to take the auto start and then this is the IP address that the open PLC will be connecting to. So we need to note down this IP. 
and then the port that we'll be connecting to is port 502 and then we need to also select the ethernet adapter that we'll be using for now we will rely on this particular internet adapter that has been selected okay in the io configuration what we need to do is to specify the inputs and then outputs that we'll be using writing is going to be inputs so we select input for that and then reading is going to be our output so that is going to be our coil so coil is already selected so we leave it as such and then when we are having analogs or registers that we need to write into we can also specify that in this project we don't have any of them and then scale we we'll also leave it as such okay so when we come to the io points this is where we need to specify the number of ios that we use within our project so the offset side refers to the beginning of our input address and in our case we, we started the address from xy100.0 so we will leave it as 0 and then our ending address can be up to 16 in our case we only use two bits from this particular address so we can leave it as 16 or we can decide to reduce it to let's say 8 because our input address is not more than 4 for the output the same we can reduce it to 8 so start address is 0 end address is 8 if you have more than 8 in the particular addresses that we use in our program we need to specify which particular number that we use registers input and then registers output we don't have that so we will leave it as default after this you click on this arrow to take you back to the driver page and then we can see that the driver block has been readjusted and then it's the input is up to 7 because we are indexing from 0 to 7 and then the output which is the core also 0 to 7 with this done the next thing we need to do is to now connect our inputs to this particular driver block so we have our start push button so i'll drag and then the our start push button is connected to 100.0 so I fix that one on dot zero and then we need to drag our stop push button also into position 100.1 so I send that one also to dot one so basically in our project we are having two inputs and then for output we have a single output which is the conveyor in this case so I will drag it and then it's also connected to 100.0 that is Q so I will connect it to the equal okay so basically we can see that here is written a uh, belt conveyor we can change the name we want to change the name to a specific name that we need we know in our case it's moto we can go back and then we turn on the tags the actuator and then the sensor tag and then we can see the actuator tag here if i double click on it and then in this particular side i can then change the name to moto and then if I go back to the driver page, we can see that the name has changed to Moto. So you can specify any name that you want. With all this configuration done, if this is the first time you are doing, you can have a connect or start written right here. So you click on it. For now, it's already connected. And then we can see the server running. So you have this green button ticked. And then only the stop showing okay great our settings in factory io is done so we need to go back to open plc and complete the settings right there okay so in open plc we've been able to add our program already so now we move to the slave device so that we'll be able to specify where factory io will be connected to open plc so we click on slave device and then we can click on add new device yes so under add new device we can specify our device name i'll use factory io and then the device type we need to specify modbus tcp device remember we use modbus in factory io and then id remember when we're doing the configuration id is one if we go to config the id is one and then the ip address we need to specify this very ip address so 192.168.124.1 and then the port is 502 okay so after specifying this very 
items in open plc we then need to specify the io as well remember our start is zero and then our end is eight so start address zero and then the end address eight for the output start is also zero and then end is eight and for the analog we don't have but we specify the default which is zero eight and then zero and then eight as well great so after specifying everything we can click on the save okay since i left one thing which is this very side which is eight and then zero and then i can click on the save again okay great so our slave device has been specified we can see our digital input starting from zero to seven digital output zero to seven and then the analogs as well we can then move into the dashboard and then we can start our plc okay great so we can see our plc started and then it's running and then we can go to the monitoring to see the interface and perfectly we can see that our stats is okay our stop is already activated remember in our stop push button on field is normally closed so you can see that it's already closed indicating that our software has been able to connect to factory io so let's go back into factory io okay so within factory io we can then press on the play button to start the system we can see the system has started and then we can now do a test if i press on the start button we can see our system has started perfectly good and then if i press on the stop we can see our system stopping now let's put it side by side okay so we can see that if because this stop is normally closed if i press it we can see that communicating with open plc if i release the stop push button it goes back to close again if i press the start we can see that the start goes through and because it's momentary it has also stopped and then we can see our output energize our conveyor running perfectly and then if i want to stop i press stop and we can see the system stopping great so we've been able to configure factory io to connect with open plc and then being able to demonstrate a simple direct online project within factory io and open plc there are a lot of great projects you can do with this just try your hands on it see you in the next tutorial bye bye